I turned 11, I entered a competition that was run through the Saddle Club and the prize was to win a pony for 12 months. So I think there are about over 30,000 kids in Australia that entered this competition and I was lucky enough to win. So I won a pony named Scruffy for a year and that's what really started my riding career. Um, I think that I just had a love and a passion and mum and dad realised that it was probably something that uh, after the 12 months I wasn't going to give up too easily. So um, yeah, I continued riding throughout high school and, and uh, that's where my eventing crew really started. Uh, after high school I, I went to Germany for a short time to uh, ride for a dressage, uh, international dressage rider over there, Holger Schultz, and that was an amazing experience that taught me a lot. And uh, yeah, it's just um, now a journey and it's what I love doing and couldn't see myself doing anything else. In 2013, I was involved in a very serious car accident that changed my life forever. Uh, a friend and I, Courtney Fraser, were on our way home from an event in Albury and had a head-on collision with a truck coming around a corner on the Melbourne Highway. Um, the truck had jackknifed and lost control and uh, yeah we were very lucky to um, I think come out of the accident alive. I look back at some of the photos and footage um, from the news at the time and and really yeah just think how lucky we, we both were. Um, we had a horse float on the back with Quartz to horses that were unfortunately both killed in the accident. So that was um, extremely traumatic and something that really sticks with me. I, I remember being in the car before the ambulance arrived and uh, the whole car was just thrashing from side to side and I couldn't figure out for a second why. And it took me a moment to realize that it was because one of the horses was in the back scrambling and um, it just made me feel sick to my stomach because there was nothing I could do. So it was um, awful in, on so many levels. And uh, I think that getting back to the hospital, um, you know, the nursing staff, the doctors, the surgeons that put me back together, uh, they were absolutely incredible and we still stay in touch to this day. So um, they're, yeah, they've become a big part of my life. And I think that after my accident, um, it was probably only two weeks or so after, I think I just got out of ICU. So I was in ICU for about 10 days and then uh, I decided to start Googling the Paralympics and equestrian, para equestrian. And it was sort of at that point that I saw the next games was going to be in Rio in 2016. And I sort of um, jokingly said to mum and dad that, oh, now I'm, I think I'm going to be a para dressage rider and I'm going to go to the Rio Paralympics in 2016. And it definitely was a, a goal at the time, but I think perhaps a bit more of a dream goal than reality. And uh, in saying that, though, I knew that I was going to get back in the saddle. That wasn't a question. I knew that I was going to ride again. And it was just a matter of how long until I could get back in the saddle. So my spinal surgeon was the one that put it on hold for six months, uh, until six months after my accident. And that's when I got the go ahead to, to get back in the saddle. And with the help of some amazing people, Julia Badham, Samantha Bartlett, um, Julia from Balmoral, they got me back in the saddle on one of their um, old school horses, Rocky. And it was just the most amazing feeling, I think, after being in hospital for that amount of time, uh, being confined to my wheelchair or my bed, you know, I was quite an active person before my accident. So to be able to get back in the saddle and, and feel the horse underneath me and, and have that, um, you know, normal movement again that it was such a normal feeling to me prior to my accident and to feel that again was just incredible and I think it was probably at that point that I realized I actually felt really comfortable in the saddle I felt balanced I felt good I felt at home and it was probably at that point the goal of getting to Rio became more of a reality than just a dream so that's when uh, family and friends sort of really got around me and supported me and, and made sure that they did everything in their power to make my dream a reality.
Uh, once I set my mind on getting to the Paralympics in Rio, uh, it was a good family friend of mine, Glenn Carter, who uh, decided to ride his bike around Australia in order to raise funds for me to be able to purchase a horse that was quality enough to get me to Rio. Uh, so that journey in itself was just something that uh, still blows my mind and the support that we both received during that endeavour was just something that you can't put into words. So in order to find the right horse for the Paralympics, uh, I needed something very specific and it was a challenge finding the right horse. So uh, I actually did two trips internationally uh, to Germany and Holland to try and find a horse and was unsuccessful both times. Uh, one we found didn't pass a vet check and uh, you know, coming back from both of those trips empty handed was like uh, pretty devastating. And at this point we were getting quite close to the qualifying events for Rio and still didn't have a horse. Uh, and it wasn't until about three weeks before our first qualifying event that the state uh, dressage coach, Lorna Jorgensen, said to me, uh, Emma, I think I've got a horse that you should come and have a sit on. Uh, he might be suitable. And so I thought at that point, I you know, looked at that many different horses, what's one more? And so I did, and uh, that was the darn, and I just knew the instant I got in the saddle, within the first few minutes, he was just completely understanding everything I was wanting. He'd never done para dressage before, but he was just so willing and trying, and he had the most beautiful paces and nature, and it was just uh, that instant going, yes, this is exactly what we've been looking for. Uh, and I suppose the funny or ironic thing is that we did two trips overseas to try and find a horse and Zidane was only 15 minutes from where I live in Australia. So, um, you know, I think again that was one of those meant to be uh, sort of things, a bit of fate stepping in and, and uh, right time, right place, right time. Uh, as I said, we only had three weeks prior to our first qualifying event and for a lot of horses I think that would be a huge challenge to adapt to para dressage and Zidane was just amazing. Uh, at our first qualifying event, he came out and got the highest scores of all the Australian para dressage riders. And uh, he actually broke a, a freestyle record at that at that first event. So he, uh, you know, I think just proved how incredible his attitude and how willing he is. And just you know, he's that the dream horse that I had been looking for. And uh, yeah. So Rio was an unbelievable experience and something that I'll never forget. Um, I think that we had challenges that we sort of didn't anticipate at the games and uh, probably didn't put our best foot forward, so to speak, but uh, we learned so much, uh, you know, I learned so much about myself and I think that as a combination we learned a lot together. I think we then took the experience and what we learned into the World Equestrian Games in 2018 and uh, after, you know, considering Zidane had come out of colic surgery only 12 months prior to that, you know, the performance that we put in at the World Games I think proved that we uh, had grown as a combination and that we were a stronger combination competitively in the, in the para dressage. And now I think I'm at a point where we, we you know, taking that next step. We've been to, uh, together as a combination for even more years now. We've been to two international competitions on the world stage and taking what we've learned from both of those now into Tokyo and, and seeing what we can produce there. Yeah, COVID has definitely made this Games uh, probably even more challenging than any other. Um, with the postponement of the Games in 2020 last year, it was really, really difficult to uh, find the motivation again and pick yourself up, you know, because we had got to a point where we were ready to go and then all of the hard work and, and training and everything that you've put in to get to that point sort of felt like it, it was lost. Um, so, you know, coming out of, out of lockdown and everything last year, we really had to pick ourselves up and, and basically start all our qualifying events again and do, do what we had done all over again. So with a horse like Zidane, who is a bit older, he's 19 now, uh, adding an extra 12 months to our 
Paralympic campaign was not ideal and uh, you know definitely something that I wouldn't have chosen but you know again he's just the most amazing horse that once again has proven how um, I think just how strong and determined he is as a character um, and that's sort of given me the strength to you know keep keep going and, and working towards this games with with COVID, COVID or not. I mean, I'm definitely excited and really looking forward to going to Tokyo and competing. And I think that I'm really happy with where Zidane and I are at uh, the timing out from, from being there. Uh, Zidane's feeling strong and fit and healthy. And, um, you know, as I said, we've, we've learnt so much as a combination that I'm really looking forward to putting all that together on the world stage in Tokyo. Uh, I suppose there is a lot of pressure that I put on myself and, and on us that, you know, it's something you have to manage because you do want to have the pressure there that's going to make you step up and perform, but at the same time you can't let it sort of uh, overwhelm you or become too much that it then inhibits your performance. So it is finding that right balance. And I think I'm at a good spot in terms of, you know, I'm going over there to hopefully come back with a medal. That's, that's the aim. But at the end of the day, I'm just so excited that we were able to qualify, that we've got a spot on the team and that we're going to represent our country uh, at our second Paralympics. Um, you know, so I think whatever the outcome, I'm just so proud of Zidane and everything that he's given me and all of the opportunities that he's given me. And um, yeah, I just hope that whatever, whatever happens, we do the Australia proud. Thing that I take away from my journey or that I'd you know like to think other people would take away from my journey and what what I've achieved is that when you put your mind to something and, and you set yourself goals with the right support system and right team around you anything's possible um, if you really have a passion and desire to achieve those goals then uh, there really shouldn't be anything that's getting in your way or stopping you um, for me you know, after my accident, my life was turned upside down in an instant and it was honestly the idea of going to Rio and representing my country and, and you know, just getting back in the saddle and doing what I love the most and that's riding. Um, that is what really gave my new life in a wheelchair the sort of purpose and meaning that I needed uh, to, you know, keep going. and and push myself, push the limits and, and you know, try and achieve and make something of my new life.